Hey dear, Zumzi here with a music-oriented manga, and it also has an anime adaption that's coming out this spring season, and I am talking about those Snow White notes by Marimo Ragawa, and I will try to keep this review as spoiler-free as possible, but I will get into minor non-earth-shattering spoilers once I get into more of the nitpicky critique and a disclaimer, but I'll try to carefully mark those in the little time stamp doobly doos in the bottom here. <laughs> With that said, let's move on to the plot itself. The story follows Setsu, who is a shamisen player, which is this old traditional like um, string Japanese instrument, and music runs in his family. However, when his grandfather passes away, he loses his creative spark, he loses his passion, and Aomori just isn't the same to him anymore. So he moves to Tokyo in order to try to find inspiration from the sounds of the city life, and he runs into this hostess named Yuka, who is aspiring to be an actress herself, and together they kind of find inspiration from each other. Okay, starting off with what I liked about this manga, and first off, this manga was posed with the unique challenge of translating sound. It is a music-based manga story, so how does it depict and show sound? <laughs> Which is an auditory thing, this is a visual medium. But it manage this, manages this by showing like visual allegories, so it transports us into kind of surreal magical scenes of nature and water rippling and cherry blossoms. So it's able to like visually depict what sound is, and I think it's successful at that, and the artwork is absolutely gorgeous in parts. Now, I am not a shamisen player myself, but nonetheless, I was able to appreciate Setsu's passion for the instrument, and I felt like the love and care and appreciation for music and the instrument pouring from the pages. So that was awesome because it's kind of like paying homage and preserving like this ancient old instrument and you get this cool fusion from new Tokyo and kind of the past and there's this cool juxtaposition there. Okay, now getting into the slightly minor spoiler part about what issues I did have with the manga and that is primarily with the pacing. It is so fast. Like, I feel like volume one could have been spread out into three separate volumes. Like, um, after Yuka Yuki, I think she goes by both names, like when is her stage name. So after Setsu first meets Yuka, <laughs> it just glosses over that. And then it references the time they first met each other. And it's like, uh, Setsu mentions like, oh yeah, that time happened in a blink of an eye, and yeah, it felt like a blink of an eye, and I felt like there could have been crucial character and relationship development in that period that we didn't see. I'm not sure if later down the road it's gonna have flashbacks, but it felt like pivotal character relationship building time was lost. It was just lost over. So I hope future volumes just hit the brakes a bit. Just slow down. <laughs> let the story breathe and let us get to know the characters. That's what I would like to see because there's so much potential to this story that I'm willing to invest my time in it. I'm hoping there's flashbacks or something, <laughs> but we'll see. Okay, moving on to a disclaimer and correction on my part. I released, um, a first impressions written review that's shorter and I want to correct some information I done goofed and I will own up to that. I mistook um, the main character's age, Setsu's age. I was confused at first. I thought he was kind of like a delinquent high schooler who was 
maybe he had to like go back a grade or something because they're talking about oh he's going back to high school and there's also a panel that says oh something 19 with him in the frame but the 19 was actually referring to his brother who was also in that scene so the mc is not 19. <laughs> i'm sorry for that mistake but there's that correction there and that goes into my disclaimer part. Uh, there might be some inappropriate minor adult relations, just as a heads up within this story. So there might be some problematic content if you want to avoid that kind of story. Maybe find a different manga or anime. However, if you are willing to look past or willing to acknowledge the story as a whole. I think there's still a lot of cool stuff in where going on. This is a shonen. It's technically a shonen, but it feels like a saint and it deals with more mature themes and feeling of being the feeling of being lost in life and physically out in the world. He moved to an entire different place and I can kind of resonate with that as a person who's traveled and lived in another country. I moved to Japan. So I can like feel what it's like to move to an entire different place and not know what's going on. And I can resonate with the feeling of being an artist, like both um, Yuka and Setsu deal with inferiority complexes, like imposter syndrome and the feeling of being in a creative slump, like, I myself went like months and months not creating YouTube videos because I just, I, that feeling, that passion for like reading wasn't there. <laughs> so there's a lot of themes that hit hard and resonate with me. And I think if you enjoy like more serious dramas like uh, Chihaya Furu, um, I'm hoping I said that correctly, Blue Period, Nana that are kind of more artistically inclined emotional dramas, I think you will enjoy this manga. I'm just hoping that the pacing slows down so we can get to know the characters better. <laughs> but anyways, those are my thoughts. If you know of any other like awesome, amazing emotional dramas within manga or anime, let me know down below in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll catch you on the flip side. See ya!